we're asked to plot the given angles in standard position and then convert the angle to exact radian measure. For number one, we have 254 degrees. Let's begin by plotting the angle in standard position. The initial side is along the positive x-axis, and now we rotate 254 degrees counterclockwise. One fourth of a rotation counterclockwise is 90 degrees. A half a rotation counterclockwise is 180 degrees. We need to rotate 74 more degrees to reach the terminal side of 254 degrees, which should be approximately here. This is the terminal side of the angle, 254 degrees, in a standard position. To convert an angle in degrees to radians, we multiply by pi divided by 180 degrees. To begin, we write 254 degrees as a fraction with the denominator of one, and now we multiply by pi divided by 180 degrees. 254 and 180 share a common factor of two. There are 92s in 180. There are 127 twos in 254. The units of degrees simplify out, and we have 127 pi divided by 90 radians. 254 degrees is exactly equal to 127 pi divided by 90 radians. I also want to show how we can check the fraction of 127 divided by 90 using the Desmos scientific calculator. To do this, though, we do have to leave off the pi. To check our work, we enter 254 divided by 180. Enter. And now from here, if we click on the convert to fraction button on the far right, we can verify 127 divided by 90 is the correct fraction part of the angle in radians. But be careful here, this is not the measure of the angle in radians because it does not include the pi. The exact measure in radians is 127 pi divided by 90 radians. If we do include the pi in the initial fraction, notice on the right, there's no option to convert to a fraction, but this does give us the decimal approximation for the measurement of the angle in radians. Let's also include this as part of our answer. 127 pi divided by 90 radians is approximately 4.433 radians. For number two, we have 123 degrees. In standard position, the initial side is along the positive x-axis, and now I rotate counterclockwise 123 degrees. Again, one-fourth of a rotation counterclockwise is 90 degrees. We need to rotate 33 more degrees counterclockwise, which brings us to approximately here, just past 120 degrees. This is the angle of 123 degrees in standard position. And again, to convert to radians, we multiply by pi divided by 180 degrees. One hundred twenty three and one hundred eighty share a common factor of three. There are sixty threes in one hundred eighty, there are forty one threes in one hundred twenty three, and the units of degrees simplify out, and we're left with forty one pi divided by sixty radians as the exact measure of the given angle in radians. And again to check the fraction forty one divided by sixty. We can enter 123 divided by 180 and click the Convert to Fraction button. But again, just remember to include the pi in the measure of the angle in radians. If we include the pi in the initial fraction, this does show us the decimal approximation for the angle in radians. 41 pi divided by 60 radians is approximately 2.147 radians. For the last angle, we have 371 degrees. The initial side is along the positive x-axis. One complete rotation counterclockwise is 360 degrees, which brings us to here, back to the positive x-axis. We need to rotate another 11 degrees counterclockwise, which brings us to approximately here. This is the angle 371 degrees 
in standard position. And again, to convert to radians, we multiply by pi divided by 180 degrees. In this case, though, the only common factor between 371 and 180 is 1, indicating nothing simplifies when multiplying, though the units of degrees do simplify out. The exact measure in radians is equal to 371 pi divided by 180 radians. In this case, there's nothing to check on the calculator, but let's get a decimal approximation for the angle in radians. To do this, we enter 371 pi divided by 180, which gives us approximately 6.475 radians. I hope you found this helpful.